Good evening, everybody on YouTube. This is Rusty again. I'm going to show just a little quick video of what I've been, kind of the, some of the stuff I've been doing. I got a little bit added on to my layout, and I'm going to continue laying track and court road bed until I kind of get this thing going. Then I can start putting scenery in. I'm placing the build, some buildings about where I want them. Not totally convinced a couple of will be where they're at, but right now that's my plan. So let me show you what I've been doing. Here we go, we're gonna talk about this thing here. Like I was saying earlier, this is, I'm gonna go display this. Here's some cattle unit track that I got. And the theory is I can move this like with T-track modules back and this will be cut. Now that I've got all the kinks out of everything. And the thing is, I am also gonna have a hinge here, not that it'll turn, but a hinge here, now I can push a pin through there. I've done this kind of thing before. It will tend to hold that in place. Same thing right here. Now, the one thing about this is look under here where I got that, that sits on that. And there's just enough room there to give enough play that I can do what I want to with this. You can see it's sitting on here. Basically, it's an experiment. Hoping it works out okay, because I'll cry if it don't. Going into here, I think this is Robert's printing, what the Walthers calls it. It's probably going to, I'm going to use it for, let's say, something paper in and paper out. Uh, rolls of paper in, magazines and catalogs and that kind of thing. Because I'm modeling the late 70s, early 80s, into the 80s, right around 1980, so... Paper magazines were a thing. They didn't have the internet back then. All right, Sears and Roebuck still had their catalog service. You could call in and order what you wanted. Now, this is a little grips luggage thing. I'm not sure if I'll leave that there, but that's primarily traffic there is going to be box cars and flat cars, primarily. Mostly box cars, they'll be the flat cars in there as well. I may have to shorten that track to make room right there by the truck doors, or maybe, you know, I'll probably have to shorten it about an inch or so. Not a big deal. Then go back over here, then I got this red wing milling plant that I've done. I think I've done a video of weathering on it or something. And what I'm thinking, you can write in the comments, is, hey, yeah, that's a good idea. On one end or the other, this thing, I'm going to put one of those Rick's grain bins or maybe some sort of, uh, if anybody's got an idea what kind of a, maybe a one or two silo, something I can put there. And maybe I can either have or build something like a header box going into here. I'm going to have grain coming in, flour going out. Be hot, covered hoppers and box cars in and out of there. And back on around, we go here. Now, this Y here, this, I haven't gotten any of that track. That track's just sitting there for some ideas later just to get a feel. Right now, the only turnouts I got left is a left hand and a right hand. So I got to get some more of those. But what I got is kind of a main line, sort of a branch line off the Louisville and Nashville. You'll see Louisville and Nashville stuff here, but also got like these cool little thing here. I bought at a train show. Couldn't resist that dude. It's got some really nice stuff on it. Little Atlas model there. Runs really well. And basically it runs around back to where it goes into the other area. I got sidetrack and a little yard and a big paper mill conglomeration over there. That's a new addition to that spot. I'm gonna do some of the pavement around there too. And there we go on to that. That's the old Walther's powerhouse, like a powerhouse kit, but that's the office building for the paper mill. There used to be stuff in there kind of back in the old days, but 75, 80 years ago, when that was built and was a part of the actual paper mill, then later on, they built this, let's say in the late 60s, early 70s over here, with all the extra stuff, and then the little blue building over there. I got another question here. I'm not sure how that blue building works. Put in the comments what you think about that. That's kind of a place where the, you can take those cars in and have that wood chips done. I'm not real sure that that works there. Maybe the building's too long or something. I don't know. Maybe it should be just a 
length of one of those cars, a 60, one of those 60 foot cars. But here's a distance view of what I've done. I got a nice lift out of here. Pretty interesting, heavy duty shingles. I mean, not hand, just shingles. But I'm gonna have it here where I got a gap. Cutting the track will be enough. I can lift this thing up. I'm still experimenting with this thing. But these will be covered up with some kind of scenery. I could just pop right in place here, just sit there. It ain't the best thing kind of for the looks. But you know what? If you look at this room, I don't have a heck of a lot of options and I got a door behind me. But anyway, like the door behind me, I got a whole nother room to be able to lay out in. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, I'm a single fellow. I can do what I want to. Yep, that's it. And I'm not sure what I'll do with every track, but I think it's going to be very minimal. I may have one little siding, but I got some Walther City buildings and some DPM kit buildings for a city block or two in here. And I got some suburban structures or houses that have been popular in the 70s. I've still got to do a pole mill, pressure treating plant for poles. I still got to put that in here somewhere. I may do some kind of T there. A peninsula come out and just a track go out there and it'll feed, let's say, a couple of places where they cut up logs. Then another place on the layout somewhere, maybe over by the paper mill or maybe over in the corner over here where they actually do the work. I don't know. I may put it over there. I don't think so, though. Anyway, I don't know how I'm going to do the log thing, but I pretty much know that building will stay. That one's going to be where it is. Those two are going to be where they are. I'm going to do, let's see, a video for one thing. The next video, one of the videos I'm going to have coming up soon, I don't know the next one or whenever it'll be, is how I do the water on this thing. I'm not going to use any rosin because the water in the area of Bayou Country, guess what? There's nothing clear about it, and the gumbo mud that's going to be around it is usually very dark gray to black, and the water is very dark. You're not going to see through it anyway. You know, If it's further than two inches under the water, you won't see it. That's just how the water is around. There you're where I live and where I'm modeling. And another thing, I got this from Mike Pfeiffer the other day. And I'm going to put this thing together on a video and show it. And I am going to use, well, let me get this thing out. This other thing I got from him, ordered from him, which is I think is a very nice deal. I got it put back in the box. Then it's one hand because I got the phone. But anyway, got these nice little pieces. I've seen Vinny use one of these, and I've seen other people. There's these different, you can do different things with those to hold stuff in place while you glue them. And that modeling cement probably won't stick to here, and you got edges around it, so the power, you knock something, it don't roll off on the floor. And that's pretty much going to be it. Just a real quick look around, and I hope everybody has a good evening. And there, there's my display case with some of my stuff. That's for Dave with Dave's trains. Look at there, man. L and N stuff, Clinchfield, some more L and N. Look at there. There's an old Cato GP38. I got to paint something. I don't know if it'll be an L and N, but I got to put a decoder in it too. That thing will, that thing will pull every piece of rolling stock I got in here. It's probably the strongest engine I got. A lot of my stuff's in boxes and things. But that's the end of the video. Get back to it and everybody enjoy building your models. And if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. See you later. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking at that. It's not a whole lot going on. Uh, on that one thing there that I didn't know that the grips look, if they, I still don't know about if I like that there. It looks pretty good there, though. It may just stay. Some box cars, flat cars in and out of there. Fine. But the rest of it, I, I like pretty good. I just did a little bit of playing, a little bit of figuring it out. So just stay tuned to the next video. One of the videos I'm going to do is going to be containing, pertaining to the water in that one lift out that comes completely out. And the success of how I did with that when I cut that track with a thin blade on a Dremel tool. And the next thing I'm going to do a build or a review on that Monroe Models gantry. Uh, it looks like a neat little thing, and we'll just see how that goes. Until next time, see you later.